Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn how to merge multiple Excel files in Python. The merge operation refers to combining multiple files based on a common unique key or a column. For those who are familiar with Excel Power Query, this merge operation is identical to the merge query operation inside Excel Power Query. Sometimes there's a confusion between what is a merge and what is an append. So let's clear that out of our way. The append operation means that we're combining files by adding new data at the bottom of the existing data. It means that we're adding data vertically. When our files are roughly the same format or columns and we want to aggregate those files, we use append. On the other hand, the merge operation basically combines files by adding data horizontally. When we have files containing different aspects of the same data records and we want to aggregate those files, then we use merge. I have created three mockup datasets. Feel free to download them and follow along. Sheet 1 and Sheet 2 contain about 100,000 records and roughly 50 or so columns. And they're basically some mockup insurance data records. And in sheet three, this is kind of the death report for an insurance company. The sheet three contains about 20,000 data points. And our goal is to create a master database to store all the information in one place. So in the finance world, we actually use Excel as a database to store information. I know it's not, I definitely do not recommend this, but it's kind of a common practice within the industry. If we look across the three files, then we notice that each file has a column with the policy ID. Sheet 1 and Sheet 3 files have the column called the policy ID, whereas in Sheet 2, that column is just the simply ID. So we can use those policy ID or the ID column to match records one by one. Since we have a one-to-one -one relationship, we can bring all the information from sheet three and sheet two over to sheet one to form a master database. And if we were to do this in Excel, then one of the ways is to use a lookup functions. And of course, because of the number of data points we have, we'll have to create millions and millions of lookup formulas, which isn't ideal. And we'll end up wasting a lot of time just doing that. So let's see how we can use Python to merge those three files together with little to no effort. To start, I'm going to import the pandas library and I'll also import the time library so that we can check the performance of the Python merge operation. And then I'm going to read all those three files into Python. So this step might take a little while. As you can see, as long as there's this asterisk symbol in front of your code block, it means the code is still running, but we can continue writing the new code in the next code block while this code is running. So now that's done, let's just print out the size of our data frames to make sure that we're working with the right files. It seems to be correct. The first two files contain about 100,000 rows and 50-ish columns, and the third file contains about 20,000 rows. I'm going to merge the first two files or the first two data frames together. So that's DF1 and DF2. And my combined data frame, I'll call it DF combine. So that's equal to DF1.merge. Inside this merge method, the first argument we want to pass is, is the data frame that we want to merge with. So that will be DF2. And inside here, the DF1 one sometimes is referred to uh, the left table and the df2 is referred to as the right table in df1 the column is called policy id and in df2 the column is called id so they have different names what we have to do is we have to tell pandas what columns to use so we use the argument left on to specify the argument for the column name in the first table or in the left table, which is policy ID. And we use the argument right on to specify the column name for the column that's in the second table or the right table. And that's going to be ID. And here I'll use how equal to left. This is just how we want to combine the data. And we'll talk about this how argument in just a little bit. Let's run this. And not sure if you saw that, but the asterisk symbol showed very briefly and then disappeared. And this operation actually completed. Let's take a look. And it seems to be correct. We have about 100,000 rows and now the column basically doubled. So that's 54 plus 54. And all right, let's move on to bring data from the DF3 into the DF combine. 
So df combine equal to df bind dot merge. Again, we're using the merge, and this time the right table is going to be df3 because sheet one and sheet three they have the same column name for the policy ID. So that means we don't have to use the left on and right on arguments. We can just use one argument is called on whenever the keys are the same between the two tables that we're trying to merge this on will just be policy id and here i'm also going to use how equal to left so this means that we want to use only the keys from the left data frame which is the df combine which means we want to use all 100,000 policy ids and let's run this to complete the merge operation that's done again super fast and let's check the df combine again so this time we have added three more extra columns compared to before. And if you scroll to the right to check the content from uh, DF3 or, or sheet three, you'll notice a lot of these on the end values. And th these are basically just null values. That's because in the sheet three, the death report, and because in the merge operation, we use left. So we want to use all the records from this left table or the DF combine. But for a lot of these records, they don't exist in our DF3. That's why you see all these null values because there's no match for the DF3. So I want to show you another value for this hell argument. So I'm basically just recreating this DF combine so that I don't have any extra columns. And this time when I merge with the DF3, I want to use how equal to inner. So this is actually the default value for uh, this merge operation. And if we leave this out, for example, if we delete the how argument, then it's going to use a uh, how equal to inner as the default. And the how equal to inner means to use the intersection of keys from both data frames. So in other words, only the keys that exist in both data frames will be returned. It means our resulting table will contain roughly 20,000 rows instead of the full 100,000 because a lot of the policies do not exist in our DF3. And let's run this. That's been done. That was finishing two merge operations and I was blazing fast. So let's check the DF combine. And as expected, we got only roughly around uh, 20,000 records instead of the full 100,000 uh, because uh, here we use the how equal to inner argument. So I'm going to show you actually how fast it was for Python to complete that merge operation. So we're going to use the time method to calculate the time. I'm just going to copy the first one. So this is so this is merging 100,000 records with another 100,000 records and both and both files contains about 50 columns. And we're going to print the final time used. All right, let's run this and see how fast it was. So yeah, so it took about 0.1 second for Python to merge two data sets, each with about 100,000 columns and 54 rows. And to be honest, if you're from the Excel world, you're probably shocked as uh, how I was when I first saw this. Comparing to Excel, this is the next level stuff. I hope you find this tutorial helpful and learn something from it. If you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button. It's going to help the channel a lot and I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next one.